Hi, here's a fresh new addition to our MC Explained series. This investor education initiative is brought to you by Money Control and Invesco Mutual Fund. So today, let's talk about the types of equity funds. If you're looking to create or maintain a mutual fund portfolio, a good first step is to understand the different kinds of schemes which are available and how they differ from each other. This will allow you to create a complementary portfolio of schemes. So now most of us are familiar with the bigger mutual fund categories of equity and debt and fixed income, right? But did you know that there are actually five formal categories of mutual funds as defined by the market regulator SEBI? The biggest, of course, are equity and debt. But besides this, there is the hybrid category, which is gaining prominence now. And this is basically a set of funds which have components of both equity and debt and hence the name hybrid. Of course, uh, these components are in varying proportions according to different risk profiles and it also includes the arbitrage fund. The fourth category is solution-oriented which houses the retirement and the children's savings fund and the final category is simply called others but this houses the passive fund so all your ETFs, index funds, fund of funds will all be housed here. So today let's talk about the types of equity funds which are available to you as an investor. But before we talk about the 11 types of equity funds, yes, there are 11, let me just lay out the concept of market cap, which will be used to define a lot of these schemes. So since 2017, all stocks have to be clearly defined as either large, mid or small cap. And this is done according to their full market capitalization and helps in standardization across the mutual fund schemes. So according to this criteria, the top 100 stocks, which means stocks with the highest market cap are called large caps. The next 150, so that means 101 to number uh, 250, those stocks are called mid caps and everything else which is ranked 251 and below will now be small caps. This list of stocks is updated and released by the Association of Mutual Funds of India twice a year at which time all the mutual fund schemes must align their investments according to the new list. I should also add that besides the SEBI defined criteria, all of these funds may also hold some amount of cash or cash equivalents. So that goes without saying, right? So let's start with the types of equity funds. The first category is large cap funds, which must invest a minimum of 80% of the scheme's assets in large cap stocks or the top 100 stocks. The remaining 20% can be invested either in large, mid or small cap. So here, the main chunk, which is 80% large caps, will provide the stability, while a mid or small cap exposure may help with the uh, requirement of delivering a bit of alpha or outperformance without significantly increasing the risk level. The second type is mid cap funds, which must invest a minimum of 65% in mid cap stocks or those stocks which are ranked 101 to 250 here. 65% mid-cap exposure will retain the flavor of the fund while the remaining can be invested in either large or small cap stocks. Alternatively, fund managers can also have more than 65% in mid-cap stocks. It all depends on what is their investment thesis. Here, having some large cap exposure will naturally add a bit of stability to the portfolio while having some more small cap stocks may lend to having more alpha. The third type is the small cap fund, which as the name suggests, must invest a minimum of 65% in small cap stocks or those stocks which are ranked 251 and below. Since many small cap stocks may not be as liquid as desired, fund managers have the ability to invest up to 35% in large or mid cap stocks. This often helps in meeting redemption demands and also keeps the portfolio liquid enough. The fourth type is what we call the large and mid-cap fund. Now here Sebi says that minimum 35% of assets must be invested in large-cap stocks and another minimum 35% must be invested in mid-cap stocks to ensure that the flavor of the fund is there. As with the other three types which we previously discussed, the fund manager is free to invest the remaining 30% in any sort of market cap stock according to their investment thesis or requirement. The next is multi-cap fund which must invest a minimum of 25% each in large, mid and small cap stocks. So that takes care of 75%. And you know, prior to September 2020, multi-cap funds could invest in stocks across market caps freely without any sort of restriction. 
but SEBI felt that there should be some standardization in the investment norms so that the true flavor of a multi-cap fund could come across. So they introduced this minimum 25% each rule for the market caps. As a result of this, just two months later in November 2020, a new type of fund was introduced called the Flexi Cap Fund, which allowed the fund manager uh, the ability to invest as per their thought process. So this is the only category right now which gives complete freedom to a fund manager to express their investing strategy in its entirety. Because of this nature, a lot of investor funds have flown into flexi cap funds and is now almost uh, you know, managing as much money as a large cap fund category. Next are the focus funds which can invest in a maximum of 30 stocks. That's it. You can't exceed the number of stocks here but within that list, a fund manager can invest across market caps as long as they maintain minimum 65% exposure in equity and equity related assets. This fund is generally considered to be a selection of the fund house's top conviction stocks and is more uh, concentrated in nature than any other scheme available. Now, the eighth type within equity funds are called the value funds or contra funds. So if you're wondering why I'm mentioning two schemes together, well, that's because an AMC may offer any one type of scheme, so either value or contra, but not both. So at the start, an AMC has to choose whether they want to offer a value fund or a contra fund. Naturally, the value fund will follow the value philosophy of buying beaten down stocks and sectors which are available at a fair valuation. This type of investment must account for minimum 65% of exposure. Most fund houses offer value funds. There are only three AMCs which stand out which offer contra funds instead. So what's a contra fund? Basically, it's a fund where the fund manager selects stocks which are against the prevailing market trend and not performing at the moment. And again, these type of stocks should make up a minimum of 65% of the fund's AUM. So the basic difference between the two is that value funds invest in stocks which are undervalued, while contra funds invest in stocks which are underperforming. Now, another big type are the sectoral and thematic funds where there must be a minimum of 80% equity exposure and now let's see how this equity exposure is allocated. So in a sector fund, the fund manager will allocate this 80% to the chosen sector. Say for example, it could be banking, pharma, IT or any sector basically, you name it. But a thematic fund may invest across sectors as long as all of those sectors are linked together through a common theme like say for example rural consumption, urban demand, logistics, transport, so on and so forth. So each of these themes will make up of a couple of sectors. Here the fund manager has the freedom to invest in the entire value chain associated with that theme up to 80%. There's no limit on you know how many sector or thematic funds an AMC can offer. However, investors must note that there is a slightly higher risk associated with these type of funds because they are more concentrated, more tactical in nature. So a good idea will be to study the fund that you're looking to invest in very carefully. The next type of equity fund is one that most of us would be familiar with, ELSS or equity linked saving schemes. Here again, a minimum of 80% must be maintained in equity and equity related assets according to the rules notified by the Ministry of Finance. In many ways, the ELSS is almost like a flexi cap fund, but there is one notable exception. ELSS funds are eligible for tax deductions under Section 80C up to a limit of 1.5 lakhs a year. For this reason, they also carry a three year lock in, which means you cannot redeem or withdraw till your investment completes three years. And finally, it's the dividend yield funds, which is the smallest equity category. Now, this type of fund must invest minimum 65% in dividend yielding stocks. Now, how is the dividend yield calculated? Well, by dividing the dividend paid by the market price. So naturally, high dividend paying companies are chosen for investment over here. But high dividend is not the end objective. The dividend yield is what is important here. Do remember that all equity funds are open-ended in nature and barring ELSS, none of the others have any lock-in period. Also, according to SEBI's new rules on riskometers, all equity funds are classified now as having high to very high risk. 
So I hope you found this information useful and you'll use it the next time you go shopping for mutual funds. Thanks very much for watching. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.